Hey everybody, Backjack JW. I uh, got some coffee here, and we're actually filming this on the cell phone, which is new for me because I haven't really used it much uh, for filming. But this is going to be the first time we're going to be really using it for a big video. Uh, courtesy of Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders for providing me with the uh, little holder there that holds the cell phone to the tripod. Okay, I got my coffee. Let's get right to it and um, not waste too much time. Movies and firearms. Uh, it's been kind of the heart of my channel here. Uh, hopefully your go-to channel for all kinds of cool stuff. Revolvers, uh, classic guns, pistols, and pistols mostly. Um, because mostly growing up, a lot of these pistols, handguns, have influenced me. And I heard this once. It was a great comment. And I believe this came from... I want to say Uzi 9mm, but uh, I could be wrong. He said, movies are just big, giant gun commercials. <laughs> and now we're not going to get into uh, which, you know, the anti-gun movie actors and all that. We're not going to get into that. We're going to get into the sole purpose of just being influenced, uh, just the attraction to what movies uh, had so much influence on me. Uh, and, you know, you can leave it down in the comments. What ones had big influence on you? All right, so first up on the list is Lethal Weapon. And, of course, the counterpart to it, Die Hard, uh, which I actually recently bought that on Blu-ray. I couldn't put my hand on it. it it's somewhere. <laughs> but uh, actually, believe it or not, Die Hard, or I mean uh, Lethal Weapon, I, it, it had more of an impact on me. And we're talking about the Beretta, the Beretta 92FS or M9 as the military designates it as. Uh, Martin Riggs' character, his uh, Mel Gibson, you know, that gun, it's just, uh, it's so iconic in it. It's just, and then of course Danny Glover has the what? Four inch barreled Smith & Wesson Model 19. You guys know I have one of those and in fact I did a video uh, Thing. It's called the guns of lethal weapon. So we talked about those two guns that they use uh, And or at least early on I think maybe part three Danny Glover start carrying up a, another backup gun that might have been like uh, maybe a Smith and Wesson 5906 uh, so But then yeah, the fourth film came along and Mel Gibson got a little upgrade with a laser and I believe in Die Hard uh, When he did live free or Die Hard, I think he might have been using a PX4 Storm But, nonetheless, Lethal Weapon and the Beretta, or Die Hard, or whatever it is. And cool known fact, the same Beretta was used in Die Hard and Lethal Weapon 1. On both counts, same gun. And I believe the NRA Museum now has it. Alright, next up on the list is something that will certainly make your day. Uh, Dirty Harry. I don't know if you can see it. Lighting's kind of dark. Lord, Dirty Harry. Now, this is the Blu-ray collection. This is the first Blu-ray I ever bought. Yes. First Blu-ray I ever bought, uh, collection-wise, uh, not uh, just in general. I had to have the Dirty Harry collection. Now, who has not seen this and just wanted a 44 Magnum? Come on. Smith & Wesson Model 29, 6-inch barrel. You just gotta... You, you have to... <laughs> John Milius, the writer, he definitely knew what he was doing when he, uh, when he wrote that in. And uh, according to facts that I've read, John Milius actually owned a 29, a Model 29 Smith & Wesson. But I believe his was a 4-inch barrel. Uh, when they went off to get one, uh, they only had the 6. I could be wrong about that part. But uh, yeah, but he wound up having a 6-inch barrel, a uh, 6.5-inch if you want to be real technical, uh, and Dirty Harry. And that's what he ran around with. And... The, the Great Hunter, Dirty Harry. Now, there, that one influenced me a big time into getting a Smith & Wesson Model 29. Uh, maybe a few too many, but <laughs> great, great revolver. Love that revolver. Okay, continuing on with the Model 29, we have the movie Taxi Driver. Robert De Niro, directed by Martin Scorsese. Now this, in this, ironically, he has a Model 29, but he has an 8 and 3 eighths inch barrel. It's a long sword of a gun. But, uh, not, uh, it, I, well, I wound up buying one because of this movie, and just 
being absolutely just drawn in and mesmerized by it. But uh, it's not too bad, honestly. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that uh, that movie definitely had some uh, play in me searching down one. Okay. So next one on is called Brannigan. Since we're kind of in the revolver mode, Brannigan with John Wayne, another John Wayne film. Um, oh, wait, wait, we haven't done the other John Wayne film. I'm getting ahead of myself. You see? Oh, we got one more. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, first one up is, of course, Brannigan, the first John Wayne film. 1975, Brannigan. Uh, if you've seen this movie, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, or you've seen my video already. Uh, we're talking about the Colt Diamondback 38 Special, 4-inch barrel. The first opening sequence of that movie, it, it just if that doesn't make you want an, a Diamondback Colt, I don't know what does. <laughs> so, yes, John Wayne, uh, it's almost the, well... You know, he, he wanted to do a Dirty Harry type movie himself, and uh, we got Brannigan, and what? Come on, guys. You know the other one. Leave it down in the comments. Okay? So the Colt 38 Special Diamondback 4-inch barrel had to have one because of Brannigan. And, okay, the next John Wayne film, I chose El Dorado because, uh, honestly, my two favorites, it comes down to Real, Real Bravo or El Dorado. I chose El Dorado over the real Bravo because, yes, he has his age yellow ivory uh, gripped 45 or 4440, basically a single action army, four and three quarter inch barrel. You guys know, in the beginning, if you've been with the channel long enough, you know the story of those grips and me, and I just, uh, yeah led me to having to own a cowboy gun and nonetheless owning the aged yellow ivory grips and then of course that story and me being able to uh, create my own uh, so go back and watch those videos if you haven't the stories uh it's there several times on the channel <laughs> all right and last but not least of course we've been uh, this has been featured a lot on the channel to, over the time uh, because of a recent uh I just acquired that pistol <laughs> and more to come we're talking about james bond 007 grew up with this stuff man i can't tell you how bad i want a well wanted a walther ppk and everybody that has grown up and watched uh, connery and more and and all that stuff and definitely understand the romance of the ppk of course we have george lazenby right there in the middle of it all but uh the ppk just you just can't uh, get around that. 007, code name, a.k.a. PPK, super cool. <laughs> uh, just can't can't get away from it. You really can't. Uh, you could even say that the series, when uh, Tomorrow Never Dies came about with Pierce Brosnan, and they changed over to P99. Little hint of some stuff that's coming up on the channel. But um, when they switched over to Walther P99, uh, I don't know. I, maybe uh, there was some backlash. It was some, you know, they, they, uh, they, the P99 was carried on all the way up to Casino Royale with Daniel Craig. And then finally in Quantum of Solace, they went back to the old PPK. And it continued on to be in Skyfall and Spectre. And who knows what's going to happen with Bond 25. So, but uh, there is a Bond film in there. And I'll give you a hint. It's a Roger Moore where they didn't use a PPK. They used something else. They used a Walther P5, and that was mostly to uh, help support the uh, new pistol that Walther came up and you know help them out and please them and everything. But uh, nonetheless, James Bond, the character, just like, I think, as iconic as Dirty Harry, the gun is just as much of a star as uh, the actor himself or the character he plays. Uh, I think James Bond and Dirty Harry is a good examples of their firearm that they carry by their side is just as big of a star as the movie and their, and them in, in the movie itself. So that's the picks that I have. And of course, you guys know if you've been around the channel, what does the movie Witness mean to me? I actually don't have it right now uh, available. I'm looking for it on Blu-ray. That's what I'm going to get it. I'm going to buy it on Blu-ray. Witness with Harrison Ford. Uh, it came out in the 80s, and that really was something that stuck with me a lot. 
and he has a, a snubby 38 special in that movie and it's a six shot k-frame and those of you that know story of a gun episode that i was doing here on the channel look up episode one it talks all about that one <laughs> so there you have it a little a brief kind of romance and firearms and the movies that influence <laughs> and that's it there you have it. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm BatJackJW. And we'll see you in another video. <laughs>